Thank you for taking time out of your busy day to join us at ProDiesel to cover some injector technical training. This PowerPoint presentation will cover some of the most common warranty related issues that we get. It will also give you some technical training on installation, diagnosis, some other stuff. A little bit of housekeeping is uh, if you want to speed through parts of this, you can. If you want to do it in sections, you can. Just click through just like any other PowerPoint and uh, you'll just move on through the presentation. You won't have to wait till I'm done talking. And again, thank you for joining uh, us at ProDiesel to help cover some of these issues. You might ask yourself, why ProDiesel? Well, here are a list of a few. We're an OE quality remanufacturer at competitive pricing. We put new tips in most CATs, Cummins Selects, and Detroit injectors. We offer less downtime because we can get it to you the same day or the next day to most of the country. We offer a check and advise program. We'll test your injectors and see which ones are bad for a nominal fee. We're ISO 9001, 14001 certified. 14,001 certification is the EPA side of it. We're just that good on the ecology as well. And we offer the industry leading pro vantage warranty of 18 months, fault free, no questions asked, across the counter warranty. Thank you for choosing ProDiesel for your remanufactured injector needs. If you believe you have a problem with one of our injectors, please call us first before you take it out or you take it back to the distributor we would like to talk to you about it, see if we can help figure out what's wrong, see if we can help you diagnose what the issue may be, and if you do have a problem with one of our injectors, and it is proven to be one of our issues, we want to start that warranty process so it's simpler and easier for the distributor when you get it back. Also remember that six injectors do not fail at the same time. We know through the law of averages that with our injector failure rates as low as what they are, you would be more likely to win the lottery than you would to have six injectors failed at the same time. If for some odd reason you do have a problem and you're out of the state that you purchased them or what, however that works, because these trucks go down the line, we do have an out of state policy available on our website that you can look at as well. One thing we know as an industry is 57% of all trucks on the road today have fault codes. When it leaves the lot, so does $440 worth of repairs. That's $220 in labor, $220 in parts. How to avoid this? Scan the truck on intake and scan the truck after completed. That gives you a full and proper diagnosis because that is key to making sure we diagnose what's wrong with the truck getting to the root cause of the problem and making sure that we're replacing injectors when they need it, not when they're not. And also, if we replace them, that we've solved the issue that caused the first set to fail. Speaking about why did they fail, what is the root cause? Is it fuel? Is it electronic? Is it mechanical? Or was it a human error? A retired 40-year veteran of Detroit Diesel Warranty said the most obvious part of failure is not usually the probable cause. Why do injectors fail right out of the box? Well, 65% of all their Pro Vantage warranty returns are non-injector related issues. First of all, contamination. Second, O-ring damage. They're either cut, pinched, or rolled. They were improperly diagnosed or it's an inherent OEM injection design failure. Um, I always like to say a Yugo is a Yugo. We can only make it so good. It's still just a poorly designed injector. We can't change the design of that injector. So three of these are preventable during installation. And that's what we want to talk about today. What makes up the 65%? of returns that we get back for warranty purposes that are not injector failures. 60% of that 65% is contamination. Under that, let's talk about storage. Do you buy your fuel in bulk? Is it a reliable source? Is it the right type of fuel? 
highway or off highway and are you putting the proper additives in it for that time of the year particulates it's critical to remove these things through filtering we have a five micron tip in some of the electronic fuel injectors today that's just a piece of dust it takes 20,000 microns to equal an inch do you have water or microbes and sludge in your it's a, prevention is the most important part to keeping fuel related issues out let's take a moment and talk about fuel storage back in 1960 uh, diesel fuel was a byproduct of the refinement of gasoline didn't use a lot of diesel fuel wasn't a big demand for it so that worked and it would last for about 10 years in today's fuel because they're having to increase the volume of what they do they actually do hydro cracking which breaks larger molecules down it makes it easier to make fuel but that gives us a twofold problem one the fuel will degrade 26% uh, in the first 28 days and it'll also 95% of it will have water in it like it is today it was good for volume to be able to use this hydro cracking but it's bad for stability remembering that contamination is what makes up 65 percent of all alleged warranties one of the things we need to do during installation is to prevent fuel particulates from getting into our fuel system so test your fuel that could have been what caused the other injectors to fail in the first place some OEs even recommend that you change your fuel filters every 10 to 20,000 miles. That's pretty quick. That's pretty often. You, before you install the new injectors, make sure you flush the system, you clean the installation area, you clean the fuel line connectors, use gloves or clean your hands before you install, just before you install. Remember, it only takes five microns to, to clog the injector tips on some of the new common rail unwrap the injector and follow the installation procedures immediately do not set that injector down before you're installing it so don't unwrap it until you're ready to put it in the engine and don't do anything after you've unwrapped it until it's in the engine put it in directly and immediately keeping dust and dirt from getting on that injector As previously stated, 95% of all fuel has some amount of water in it. It accumulates in the tanks. Uh, it increases the chance of microbial infection. Uh, you get bacteria and fungi that can just wreak havoc on a fuel system. You know, it also accelerates the oxidation and breakdown. Now we know that 26% of uh, degradation happens in just the first 28 days. So we don't need it to break down any faster than what it already does. And it contributes to tank corrosion. Some of these microbes are uh, so uh, corrosive that they can eat through a five millimeter 316 steel in just 30 days. Because we went to low sulfur fuels, uh, there's just no resistance in the fuel now because of that. It causes slime, it plugs up your filters, it spreads real easy from one one uh, piece of equipment to another you're using the same nozzle to fill them uh, you could even pick up uh, contamination at a fuel service center so be careful where you're getting your fuel make sure that you're putting the right additives and taking care of it making sure this doesn't happen to you and sludge just as you can see there in the picture just plugs up your filters and of course if any of that gets through it clogs up an injector and then you've got big trouble a few questions to ask yourself. Have you checked your tanks lately? When was the last time your fuel was tested? Is it on a regular scheduled maintenance program? What can you expect if the fuel is bad? Have you checked for microbes? And which one is best for you, mechanical or chemical solutions, to, to keep your fuel up clean and up to date? And can you do it yourself or do you need to hire someone? It cannot be stated enough that filter 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 is the only way to make sure you get good peak performance out of your injectors 
number two on our list of non-injector related failures is damaged injector o-rings which make up another 35 percent of the returns we get back this happens during installation and it's most common on the back cylinders where the cut rolled or flattened o-ring we also get them from combustion heat which results in fuel leaking into the engine or compression gases in return fuel Anytime you take an injector out, you need to make sure that you replace the O-rings, don't reuse the O-rings, and you should use a thin coat of ethylene glycol or petroleum jelly when you do the installation to keep them uh, lubricated as they go in so they do not take it, uh, reduces the risk of getting cut. Make sure that they are properly seated as well. You don't want them out of alignment one way or the other. It will flatten the O-rings and cause the other issues. The next in our list is just some common installation issues or misdiagnosis makes up the last 5% of our returns. Uh, starting with not checking the wiring harness. A bad harness will equal misfires and you'll assume that it's an injector. And when you replace the injector, you'll have the same problem. We get those back and somebody ends up changing a wiring harness. Guess what, they fixed the issue and it must have been the injector. No, it was the wiring harness to begin with. Clean or replace the injector tubes. That will cause them, if they're bad, will cause the injectors to leak or get blow by. Check in the electrical grounding. Poor ground will give you misfires as well. On Cummins, the N14, M11, and L10, there's a bad part number, the 30 dash 3682 is a bad part number. It causes misfires itself. So you need to replace that with the, with the new updated version. And on CAT C7s, the fuel pumps, uh, Caterpillar requires you to change those or request that you change those every 150,000 miles. They tend to just disintegrate themselves, throw metal contaminants into the uh, fuel system, and you're going to clog injectors. I like to say that fuel injectors are the most expensive fuel filter you'll ever buy. Continuing with our common installation issues, uh, you need to check your fuel equalizer. Make sure the breather is not plugged or frozen. Check your fuel pressure. Make sure that it meets OEM specs. Low fuel pressure causes issues. Use diagnostic software. OE or qualified aftermarket. Make sure it's up to date. Proper connections. I used to sell diagnostic software and I can tell you, if you don't use the right connectors, you get really strange information. Make sure you have the right adapter that goes along with it. So you're getting the right signal coming off of the truck. When applicable, set the trim codes. The CD is included in everything you need uh, with our injectors. We use the OEM trim codes if you need them. If a CD is not in there, you don't need to set the trim codes. The key here is to make sure that you're finding the root cause. That's why we get a lot of these back. People don't find the root cause when they install the injector because the first one failed for a reason. Let's make sure that we don't put an injector back in a system that's going to fail it. Please remember, it is critically important that you find the root cause before replacing the injectors. What caused the injector to fail the first time? Was it contamination? Was it just wore out? Was there an electrical problem? You must find out why the first ones failed. Once you figure that out, you can fix that problem as well as replace the injector. The problem is, is if you don't, you will have premature failure on the next set of injectors because the problem's still there. Now that we've covered some of the most common reasons for failure and returns for warranty, let's get in a little bit of the technical side of this. We're going to cover the diagnosis, how to properly diagnose something identification, actually what happened to the injector, so you really understand what's going on with it. Some installation tips, then we're going to cover a little bit about making sure that they're uh, functioning properly when you first put them in, and then how to manage the core. 
The biggest key to diagnosis is to make sure that you have understood the root cause of the failure was and the most common are filtration, is it a pump issue, oil getting through, messing it up, connectivity issues, or just the age of the injector. Let's go into some CAT electronic injector uh, installation and removal procedures. First of all, start by disconnecting the harness assembly. Mark the bridge assemblies and the injectors for reference during replacement. Each injector must be reinstalled in the original sleeve. Remove the bridge assemblies. Remove the bolt, spacer, and clamp holding the injector in place. Inspect the hold down assembly. If the bolt is not loose during the disassembly, then use tooling to pry beneath the base and free the injector. Remove the injector from the cylinder head and inspect the injector bore for debris and sign of wear. Here is a diagram of a come and select electronic injector. If you would take some time to look over this diagram and look at the parts and pieces and familiarize yourself before you go to the next slide and see if that will help as well. Over the next few slides, we'll go over some steps and some procedures that you should always do when you're uh, installing come and select injectors. Uh, make sure that you understand what your torque is supposed to be on each one of the injectors so you know what you're supposed to, uh, the recommended OEM torque specifications are. On a select injector, the nozzles can be easily damaged if you contact a hard service while putting it in. If you do, you can deform the tip spray hole or you can crack it and, and cause a blown nozzle. When you're replacing the select injectors, always can disconnect the battery cables for at least five minutes to let the computer reset and ECM to balance itself out and, and so it'll relearn. After the in installation, allow the engine to run for 50 miles to allow it to recalibrate and understand that there's a new injector and the ECM balances out the engine and gets rid of all your misfires and your rough running. And never replace an injector for a misfire unless it fails two successive CompuLeak uh, automatic cylinder performance test. On a select injector, it's important to never replace an injector for a rough idle or misfire complaint if there's no low power complaint. Never replace an injector without referring to the OEM select troubleshooting procedures. Make sure that you understand and you've troubleshooted this thing correctly. Always remember to find the root cause of the problem. Just because you think it's an injector doesn't mean that is what the problem is. Never replace an injector if the complaint cannot be verified. If you can't make it do it again, don't do it. Never replace injectors in full sets without a specific identified cause, like you're remanning an engine. Then you should always replace all six injectors. If you're gonna rebuild the engine and you want a new fresh engine and new fresh specs, replace the injectors as well. Check the fuel inlet restrictions on all low power complaints before other diagnostic work. Never replace injectors at the same time other components are replaced. That way you really know what the core reason was, the root cause. Uh, change too many things at the same time, you'll not know whether you fixed it or made it worse. When it is necessary to replace two or more injectors to correct rough idle or misfire, always check the filters and tanks for water presence. Drain the water before restarting. 13 and 14 here are a little detailed. I'll let you pause at the end of this slide to go over those more in detail. Uh, I'll start with 15. Uh, let's never replace a, set of full, a full set of injectors for fuel dilution in the lube oil. We never replace an injector for external O-ring leaking fuel. Just replace the O-rings. Never replace an injector for any fault code with injector solenoid checks out okay. The solenoid's okay. It's probably not that the root cause of that problem. 
Never replace an injector with a faulty or broken pigtail connector. Replace the pigtail. Injector's probably fine. Note, leave all protective caps on the new injector until ready to install. Please don't take the cap, the protective cap off until you're ready to install it. If you drop it, if you ding it, if you scratch it, if you get dirt, contaminants on it, you are more likely to have a premature injector failure. And always refer to the OEM installation manual for complete installation procedures. Before installing replacement injectors, it's very important. Cannot stress it enough that you determine the root cause of the failure. Correct any possible contamination issues. Metal from a failed high pressure pump, poor fuel handling, flush the system before installing and running the replacement injectors. Do not remove the injector from its protective package until ready to install. This will reduce the likelihood of contamination or external damage. Install trim codes from the CD-ROM if required. Prevent injector plunger spring failure. Prime fuel system before starting the engine. Not doing any of these recommendations can and will result in premature injector failure. If you do not find the root cause, if you do not install your injectors correctly, follow the guidelines, you will have the same problem because you haven't fixed the last problem. This concludes our ProDiesel Tech Training Module. Thank you for taking time out of your busy days to go over some information about diesel fuel injection. And if you have any comments or questions, you want to send those directly to me at gfarmer at dssprodiesel.com. Or if you want to give us a call at our counter and ask them some questions or have anything else you'd like to discuss about diesel fuel injection, let us know. Our number's at the bottom. And thank you again. We appreciate your business. We appreciate your time. Thank you.